We're celebrating a charitable Christmas in the Carolinas. Stay tuned. Carolina People's coming up next. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Villa Romana Italian Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on area charities at Christmas time, and we're visiting with Mike Zemke with Toys for Tots. Mike, thanks so much for being with us Great. this morning. Thanks for having me. Incredible opportunity to highlight so much on Christmas Eve. I think we're sitting here in front of an activity scene. Mm -hmm. So much of the focus of the year wraps around not only the activity scene, but giving out presents, and that's mm -hmm. much of what your focus has been this season. And, and a, a heck of a lot of seasons in the recent past. We understand. Yeah. Are you originally from the area, Mike? No, actually, I moved here from uh, Charleston in uh, 1997. And before that, I moved from Colorado to uh, South Carolina for the first time in 1990. Did you grow up in Colorado? No, uh, actually, I, I spent a long time there, but I grew up all over the country. We moved about every two years. My father used to work for uh, IBM, so they had a mm -hmm. policy of moving people all the time. So lived uh, all over the Midwest and the East Coast. IBM's got a big presence in the Triangle. Did you ever live in the Raleigh Durham Chapel Hill area? No, never did. Never did. A different wing of the company, I think. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. What brought you to Myrtle Beach in '97? Well, it was the opportunity to work with Divine Dining Group. That's the company I work for. Um, they're uh, one of the largest restaurant employers in the Myrtle Beach area. And um, the owner, Jack Devine, and I knew each other from college. And Jack uh, was building this incredible company up here. Uh, wanted a little bit of help, and it was an opportunity for me to use my sort of lifelong experience in restaurants to its fullest potential. And mm -hmm. so I, I jumped at the chance to come up here and work with them. What's your position there, Mike? Uh, loosely titled as a Vice President of Operations, which uh, is a terrible title that actually means um, do anything it takes to keep them open. <laughs> so, uh, I, so I, you are... I literally have done everything in the company at some point or another. That's amazing. Currently, I focus mostly on human resources and uh, information systems. Right, right. For a lot of viewers in the PD or southeastern North Carolina who may not be totally familiar with the mm -hmm. Vine Dining Group, it's tough to come to Horry County, even come to Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. and not have some experience with the Vine. But what are some of the properties that some viewers may have heard of or may or, or would maybe want to hear about next time they come to town? Probably what everybody knows the best for is either Ultimate California Pizza, which we have uh, eight, eight locations on the beach now, and also uh, River City Cafe. You know, people come from all over uh, the southeastern United States, and some Times they have to go to River City as soon as they get into town, which we love. Yeah. Um, we've also got other well-known local restaurants that people may not realize are part of our group. Um, the Divine Fish House is our newest, uh, largest, most beautiful restaurant. Also, uh, Bovines uh, and Longhorn Steakhouse, which has been on the st strand for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. Latitude 22. Oh, a that's another new one. Forgive that me for getting No, yeah. no, no. Jackie Powell would kill me if mm -hmm. I didn't uh, give you the opportunity to mention that. When we think about um, when we think about Divine Dining Group, we think about a heck of a lot of folks that have been committed to the community. Is mm -hmm. Divine Dining supporting your involvement with Toys for Tots? Yes. It, it, when I first came to the company, you know, in the beginning, you have to integrate yourself into a new company. The task they gave me when I first got here was, we want to support a local charity. Um, find us a local charity. We talked about what type of giving we'd like to do. And uh, to all of us, to the owners, uh, Nate Anderson and Jack Devine, we feel that children's charities are the most beneficial and the most needy. Uh, in a country like ours, with the wealth and the affluence of the United States, there's no reason that any child should suffer or, or go without, especially uh, during the season of giving. Mm. So that mm. led us down the road to uh, Toys for Tots. I began to inquire. I'd done some work with Toys for Tots in Charleston as a, as a donation point. Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. wanted our restaurants to be a donation point. Mm -hmm. My inquiries got me to the point where there really wasn't a Toys for Tots program here. Mm. Um, I started asking the National Toys for Tots Foundation, you know, what well, what can I do? Should I take my toys to Charleston? Should I take them to Wilmington where there's a program? They said, no, what we'd love you to do is why don't you start a program in Myrtle Beach? Mm. And uh, they gave me the license and the, uh, the things I needed to start the program. Uh, that was in 1997. I believe that first year uh, we drove around, Nate and I were the only people, and we drove around and picked up uh, just over 1,200 toys. And uh, it's grown every year since then. Twelve hundred in nineteen ninety-seven, the first year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, it was. A, it's been very, very uh, fulfilling, and also the growth has been staggering. You know, we had to uh, right away. Um, it, it sort of taxed our resources. Mm -hmm. um, most Toys for Tots programs are done around the Marine Corps reserves nationally, and we don't have a Marine Corps reserve base here. We do have Marines in the area in the community. 
um, it's too much for them to take on directly as well. So mm -hmm. we needed uh, help most of all in distribution of the toys, and that's where we got connected with the Salvation Army. Right, right, absolutely, and that can, and that and that help has been dramatic. Yes, it's that been a great has relationship has been dramatic. Why, why do you think uh, you all decided? Uh, obviously, you had that experience with mm -hmm. toys, at, toys for Tots in Charleston, even as a pick up, as a donate, as a drop off location. Why do you think you focused? and help Divine Dine and get focused on Toys for Tots rather than some other charity. I mean, there's a heck of a lot of children's charities all this week. Mm -hmm. You know, we're focused on whether it's Horry County Shelter Home or the uh, Children's Center at Cedar Branch. It's amazing mm -hmm. how many children's groups there are. Why do you think you, you focused on Toys for Tots? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, the, the, one of the biggest ones being its national recognition. Yes. Um, and I did a little research about children's charities across the country. Mm -hmm. And I found that Toys for Tots um, was one of the most worthwhile, used the least of its money for operating purposes as mm -hmm. far as other charities that I knew of, um, as a national charity. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I was most impressed with the way they conducted the program, the spirit of the program, um, you know, helping the children in need and getting new unwrapped toys to kids who needed them in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, there couldn't be any better way of seeing the direct effect of collecting actual toys and distributing them here in the community. The other thing we liked about the, the charity was that 100% of what we did, 100% of what we would collect would stay right here in Horry County and Georgetown mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. We, you know, nothing goes out of this area. And that was important to us. You know, we didn't want to see a lot of our money go to a national foundation that would distribute it to other places. We wanted it to be right here. That's spectacular. If you could summarize what what it's meant for you the most, obviously having set up the helped to set up the chapter for Ori in, in Georgetown County in '97, can you summarize? Can you even put in words? I'm sure there's so many experiences involved in that. It's it, the the actual distribution of it is probably the high point for me to see the toys go to the needy families, to see the people who come to the Salvation Army distribution who. You see the the look in their eyes. You know how can I get through this season with my small children and and let them experience the joy of the season when I have nothing to give them. And uh, it's overwhelming. I mean, I've had people cry as we help them out to the car with this stuff. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen people who really felt that they didn't deserve it, but yet they really needed it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, uh, personally, as a Christian, this is the season for giving. Um, I want to do things in my life that um, emulate the spirit of Jesus Christ, and this is uh, one simple way to do it. That's amazing. That's amazing. Those are great words, Mike. When we think real quick, can you just help lead a viewer through what happens, mm -hmm. how folks find out about drop-off locations, mm -hmm. how they get to the Salvation Army, how they're then distributed now that you're using the Salvation Army, and, and what is your role? And obviously it's changed since 97. I know that's a lot of questions. Let's talk real quick about how does someone find out about where drop-off locations are, mm -hmm. and then what do they have to drop off? Let's say this is for next year. Obviously it's Christmas mm -hmm. Eve today. We'll focus on next year. Maybe what happened a little bit this year? The program grows every year based on the people who are the drop-off points. They're the focus of the program. Um, getting the various businesses in the community who will function as a drop-off point is important to us. Mm -hmm. We start that in the beginning of the fall. Um, also, orchestrating with the various media partners like yourself and other mm -hmm. people in the community who can help get that word out there and let people know where the drop-off points are. Mm -hmm. We do things such as live remotes with the radio stations mm -hmm. who will go to a place and, and say, we're on air, bring us toys. We do promotion through the restaurants where we try to have special gifts and things to give people if they'll bring a toy in. Um, so we set up these different drop sites throughout the fall. We get them all staffed with, um, or I won't say staffed, we put in the boxes and we try to give them the materials and support things they need to be a drop-off site um, around the 15th of November. And that's when the program typically kicks off. Through that time period, we'll be collecting toys. But I've come to realize over the years that the majority of the donations and the majority of the toys come in uh, that two weeks before Christmas. Right. That's when people are out in the stores, they're buying something, they see the box, they decide to drop it off. Um, so we, we do the bulk of our collections up through that point. Um, anybody who wanted to be a drop-off site just needs to call my office, and I'll give you that number, or, or call uh, the Marine Corps League, which we'll talk about in a minute. The Marine Corps League is... Uh, basically taken over the Toys for Tots program. If anybody's not familiar with them, they're the retired Marines in the area who formed a, a, a community organization. And uh, John Kolbesik, who's uh, the commandant of the local chapter, um, really took this program to the next level. John, John has taken over as local coordinator. He's put a Marine spirit and a Marine sense of organization into it. Mm -hmm. He's gotten a tremendous amount of people in the community behind him and what he does. And so they, um, they provide a lot of manpower to go out and collect the toys. 
And this time of the year, the whole focus is getting the toys, getting them up to the Salvation Army, where they provide the logistics and the manpower to sort them, get them to the right people, and then obviously do the distribution of them. Yes, and Mike, you seem to have that Marine spirit. Whether you served in the Marines or not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But I uh, didn't, but I wish I had at this yeah. point. Uh, seeing the people that uh, I've been involved with, and that's the other great part of the program for me, is, is the people in the community that you come in contact with, the, the spirit of giving and the spirit of cooperation with the community is unbelievable. Um, uh, and so, uh, yeah, especially getting to know some of the great Marines at the Marine Corps League, I mean, these are, these are true heroes. These are people who have served their country again and again and again, and yet here they are again, uh, serving their community with this type of program. And Mike, these are wrapped gifts, or these are unwrapped gifts? Well, some people like to wrap them, and, right. and we don't, you know, we, we try to discourage that a little bit because we have to unwrap them, obviously, for the parents' sake, so they can pick out the right toy for their child. Right. Um, they're new unwrapped toys. Uh, in 1947, when the original program began with a Marine Corps uh, reservist by the name of Major Bill Hendricks in Los Angeles, he was using a combination of used and refurbished toys, but uh, they decided in around the 1970s for a variety of reasons to switch to new toys. Um, and then we get these new unwrapped toys, and part of the other uh, reasoning there is that the parents need to be able to pick out a toy for their child that best suits them. Rather than us handing one to them and saying, here's the toy you need to give your child, we let them be part of the process. It's uh, quite rewarding for them as well. Mike, can we give can we give the viewers? I want to ask one other question. Can we give, give the viewers your number? Mm -hmm. Folks can contact Mike Zimke uh, even for next year. Yeah, you can call me at the, my offices at the Divine Dining Group. It's two three eight nine three eight one. And if I can't answer the question, I'll put you in contact with the people who can. We would love to have people be part of this program and be drop off sites and uh, and make it grow every year. Real quick, Mike, what's meant the most? I know we asked that a little bit earlier, but what's been the the best part of your service for Toys for Tots? Seeing, uh, seeing the look on the parents' face when they find that they can, there's a sense of relief, there's a sense of uh, joy uh, that comes in seeing those people be, realize they can help their children, they can give their children a toy this Christmas, and then seeing the children who are, you know, waiting for these toys, and, uh, you know, we don't let them come through the actual picking out process, we like to hide that from them, but seeing them skip out to the toy, and they realize something's great is going to happen, that their Christmas is going to be special, and that's what means a lot to me. I realize right now something great, great's happened over the last six weeks and throughout the year getting ready to, to help Mike Zemke and, and the folks at Toys for Tots uh, make this Christmas a very special Christmas for a lot of folks. Mike, thanks so much for being with us Thank this you. morning. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at Villa Romana Italian Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on area charities and we're visiting with Captain John Lighty of the Salvation Army of Horry County. John, thanks so much for being with us thanks this morning. Thanks for the invitation and Merry Christmas to you. Absolutely. On Christmas Eve, to think about sitting here, uh, Christmas goes on. I think tomorrow we've got to Reverend Bobby Wilkson and the excitement of thinking about Christmas year-round and trying to hope make, uh, help make Christmas a year-round activity for all of us. Real quick about yourself, are you originally from the area? No, no, I'm not. Originally, I was born a Yankee, and uh, but say Southern by the grace of God, and uh, had been here in Conway now for four years. And uh, uh, typically, the Salvation Army moves uh, their offices around every three to four years, and so I'm buying time as it is as in the Salvation Army world. But I'm really hoping they forget about me, and I get to stay in Myrtle Beach and <laughs> Conway for a long time. Great community. How long have you been here, John? Like be four years this upcoming January of, of 03, and uh, I'm really hoping I get to do it another four. When did you first find out about the Salvation Army? Is this a, at a childhood age, or? Well, my parents are now re retired Salvation Army officers, and so I was born and reared in the Salvation Army, and so it's always been a part of my life. But uh, my parents, interesting enough, instead of Dad wanting me to follow in footsteps like fathers sometimes do. My dad really encouraged me not to be a Salvation Army officer, hmm. only because he really believed that it has to be a self and your own personal calling by God to be a Salvation Army officer, because it's not only administering social services, but it is also a full-time pastor. And uh, so I needed to have my own personal calling from God. 
Did you have some time away, John, prior to, uh, as you were seeking, or as that before that calling was made? Did you have a time working anywhere else prior to beginning as an officer oh, in the yes, Army? Oh, yes, sir. My wife and I were in our mid-twenties. We had our, our tri-level house. We had the company cars, and we had two children. We were, if you will, the all-American family and uh, had our careers well ahead of us, etc. And uh, one very miraculous Sunday... The Lord, in a very special way, while my wife and I were split 200 miles apart, both of us received the same message at the very same day, at the very same time. We knew it could only have to come from the Lord, and uh, our direct calling to really get to give everything up to be a Salvation Army officer, and that's what we did. And ever since then, we went to the Salvation Army uh, Seminary in Atlanta, Georgia, in 1983. We graduated in 1985 and been Salvation Army officers ever since. Captain Lighty, you and your wife got the calling the same day, the same time. Had she had that experience uh, growing up in, a, in the family, at least being aware of the Army, having experience with it growing up? That's amazing. Well, her parents also are sal retired Salvation Army officers, Isn't and so right? we've been involved, both of us have been involved with the Salvation Army all of our lives. But the, it was a very dramatic a day for us. We had no intentions of, of being Salvation Army officers. We were certainly committed to Christ and, and following uh, his lead for our lives, but that, that became that one special day, and uh, we said yes, and uh, we had to sell our house, our cars, all of our furniture, everything that we worked so hard for for those years, and, uh, and took our two children and went to the Salvation Army Seminary, and we've been here and been involved with the Salvation Army ever since. John, that's amazing. Let's talk real quick about the Salvation Army. When was it formed and its original mission, uh, or, and where was it formed? It was formed in London, England, back in 1878. Mm. From then, a Methodist minister. But back in those days, the church didn't really do a lot of involvement of helping people that were down and out or in the slums. And it was uh, his calling, William Booth, to be able to minister not only in the churches, but also to minister to those people who were without. Uh, there was some discrepancy about his ability to do that, and so he was literally kicked out of the Methodist church because of his ministry to the people in the streets. And uh, he then started his own organization, which first started as the Christian Mission, but then evolved around to what we now know as the Salvation Army. It has expanded, and now it's over to 108 different countries all over the world. Uh, I think it speaks in 98 different languages, including right here in Conway and Myrtle Beach. That's amazing. That is amazing. How, how long has uh, the Salvation Army been in Horry County? Been here for serving Horry County for over 53 years now. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you said it stretches as far as 108 countries and... Uh, 108 different countries, and uh, one of the great benefits that our church and the people that I would be pastor over, we had a recent opportunity to go to Kenya and, uh, and to help with a missions project over there in Africa, and we helped uh, a rebuild and reconstruct a, uh, a woman's hostel in Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, just the influence of the Salvation Army really stretches worldwide. Right, definitely. Obviously, around Christmas time is when we see so much of, a, of the recognition of the Salvation Army comes to comes really just comes out in so many ways for people that may not have had experience with the Army on a regular basis or may not even seen it. The bell ringers come out at some oh, yeah. level. That's one of many a aspects of that. How's that going this this Christmas uh, here in Horry County and throughout the country? I, I know I've read something about it, and there've been some some changes or some effects. How, how's it going? The Salvation Army Red Kettle effort uh, has been a, a, a regular standard for Christmas. Some people will even say that it's not Christmas until they actually hear the Salvation Army bell out in front of the stores, etc. There have been some changes. There have been some different corporations that have changed their bylaws and how they allow different uh, charities to be able to stand out in front or solicit in front of their properties. Uh, we have been faced with some restrictions this year. Mm -hmm. And now while those restrictions have been put upon the Salvation Army, and other charities, other people are, are facing the same difficulties that we are, we are finding that we're about 40% uh, short of windfall from what we were last year, with an increase of people coming to the Salvation Army of about 20%. And so you put those two numbers together, we're really going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to help more people with less money. And uh, so, what we always know, and uh, it always has been a proven fact that once people know of a need here in Horry County, there's been yet a time where the people haven't stood up and said, we care and we want to help. And so I'm really believing and uh, really believing in the Lord that he's going to provide us with exactly what we need. 
and uh, we're really believing that the people are going to come to the forefront again. And uh, when all of the bills come in, either right now or well after Christmas, that people will still have an opportunity to help support the Salvation Army in its year-long uh, programs. And you really have to turn to the Lord at this time. At, the, at that, if, you're, if it's down 40% and the needs are even more recognized, at even 20% up, that's a, that's a huge opportunity. You've got to turn in that right direction. And that, and that helps tie into other services that are going on this time of the year, other holiday uh, services that are being provided, not only at the holidays, but year-round. Let's talk about some of the holiday services. Some of the holiday services, we are providing a Christmas joy toy uh, distribution. Um, the toys were distributed to over 1,100 families on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of December of this year. If you multiply that out times 2.5 on average, a number of people per family, you can see we're, we're ministering to over three to 4,000 individuals, um, over 1,900 children alone. Oh. And uh, so it's a really big effort for the Salvation Army at Christmas time. That's just one of the things included with the toys. They're also getting food baskets. I can't begin to tell you how many cans of corn we packed and processed and put into the boxes to be able to give out to the families. And there's just a multitude, multitude mm -hmm. of different programs that the Salvation Army really focuses on. We get a lot of tremendous support from agencies and, and organizations like the Toys for Tots that really help support the Salvation Army at this time, mm -hmm. and where we get a lot of our, our toys that we would distribute out to that. And so putting it all together, it's, it's the song at Christmas time said it's the most wonderful time of the year. And while it is the most busiest time of the year, I truly believe this is the most wonderful time of the year. Very definitely. Very definitely. And, and, and really, I, it's partly so wonderful because there's so many volunteers that are out there helping out. Volunteers are an incredible aspect of the holiday, uh, uh, distributing toys, of uh, being parts of uh, being out, uh, soliciting at the kettles. How does that work? How do volunteers uh, fit in at this time of the year and, and later in, into 2003? Well, it's very important to the Salvation Army to have that volunteer basis that helps give us support. Uh, we need it and really every single day of the year. Uh, we did a quick study. We have hired a volunteer coordinator now, and he's been on the job for about a year. And we have done a, a quick study to find out exactly what the influence of volunteers have been with the Salvation Army. And just wage-wise, if we would have had to pay for all the volunteers that helped the Salvation Army over the last past year, it would have been over $70,000 that we would have had to pay in wages out to people that we don't have the budget for. Mm. But the, because the people cared and people gave themselves and their time, their talents, and their treasures to the Salvation Army and volunteered, we saved that kind of money and we're able to do the services and programs, whether it be our social service programs, or our Boys and Girls Club programs, yeah. or our Christmas holiday programs, all of that. People have come alongside to help the Salvation Army minister to other people. That's spectacular, John. And I'm glad, and I'm glad you mentioned the Boys and Girls Club. That's a very important aspect of the uh, Salvation Army here in Horry County. Not in all yes, counties, but here in particular. Can you tell the viewers real quick about the experiences uh, with the Boys and Girls Clubs here in Horry County? Well, we have a really good affiliation with the Boys and Girls Club. What we intend to do is we put the two really good programs, the Salvation Army and the Boys and Girls Club together with the resources that both programs and both agencies have together, put it together, mold it under one umbrella, and we believe that we can pool those resources that we're able to offer the programs and services to the children here in Horry County through our Boys and Girls Club program. We currently are servicing typically on, a, on every afternoon after school about three to four hundred children per day through the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club programs, afternoon uh, tutorial programs, computer labs, uh, athletic leagues, and the list could just go on and on and on about with keeping the kids busy. The highest crime rate for juveniles is from four o'clock to six o'clock. And if we can take those kids instead of letting them just run aimlessly around the streets, if we can give them something to do, something constructive, put some positive thoughts into their mind, we believe that we're not helping not only just the child, but we're helping all of Horry County, you know, and being a better community. Absolutely. Absolutely. John, if there was a viewer who wanted to give, whether some time, volunteer some time, or some resources and needed to get in touch with, the Salvation Army of Horry County, how would they best, who would they want to call, and what number would they want to reach? Our main administrative number, which is in Conway, is 488-ARMY, or 488, it's numerically, it's 2769, 488-2769.
You heard it. 488-2769. The experiences this year of helping to distribute, obviously having Mike on a little earlier to distribute the Toys for Tots throughout the community. The Salvation Army's commitment to help out the Toys for Tots this year, as well as all the activities you all have done on a year-round basis. Is there any one aspect that's been most meaningful to you, John? Well, we had one just yesterday. Uh, we had a visitor to our toy shop who who wanted, really was coming in to visit a volunteer who was working in our toy shop. And they, they, they came in and took a look around to see what the Salvation Army was doing, all the food boxes, all the toys that were ready for display in the pickup, and they didn't really know what the Salvation Army did at Christmas time. They visited, they heard the story, and she stood there in our toy shop and she wrote us a check for $1,000 to go out and buy bicycles for kids. That was where we were short this, this particular Christmas season. I don't know how the Lord sent that lady into our, our building that day, but the, I know that we have already spent that money. We had the bicycles on the floor, and they're going to be giving out to children. And it's a daily things like that, that the Lord sends people just exactly when we need them. And again, I know that the Lord's going to send and enrich Horry County enough to help support the Salvation Army. Carolina people are excited that Captain John Lighty was sent here to share um, the Salvation Army's message with viewers today. John, thanks so much for being with us Thank this you. morning. God bless you. Yeah. Stay tuned for more Carolina people coming up next. We want to thank the Montrose family and Villa Romana Italian Restaurant, as well as Mike Zimke and Toys for Tots and Captain John Lighty and the Salvation Army for making this Christmas Eve a little more special. <laughs>